What is going on, Alf Hunters? Hopefully everybody's having a very terrific Thursday. We are going into the second weekend of the NFL season. Week three for college football. But the market's rolling, so let's take a look and see what's going on today. Nice reversal yesterday. Uh, basically, <clears throat> as we got on the mic yesterday, I mean, we basically just bottomed. Uh, we just went bullish, pretty much in a straight line, all the way to close. Uh, it was very interesting trading, and one of the things that we were looking at there, uh, and that we're about to look at here, is as we start out, and we noticed, oh, the Qs weren't trading below last week's lows, and the RSP and DIA were, so let's see what's going on today. SPY is basically flat. We did get a little bit of data this morning, so let's take a look at that. Uh, we got PPI. PPI came in year over year 1.7%, which is a little bit less than forecast of 1.8%, and a little bit below prior of 2.1%. We also got initial jobless claims, 230K. Forecast is calling for 230K. Prior was 228k. You can say pretty much flat, staying, staying roughly even. So there you go. Core PPI year over year came in at 2.4 percent. Forecast is calling for 2.5 percent, and prior was 2.3 percent. So there you go. All right. So that's kind of the day that we got today. Q's. Uh, yeah, looking pretty good. Currently up about 0.1 percent. IWM has bounced back pretty good today. Uh, they did end the day yesterday, uh, end yesterday positive, uh, but they were getting beat down there pretty good in the morning. I think you see this morning, nice little gap up, dropped off there pretty quickly in the day, and then kind of just based out and popped there second 30 minutes of the day. Okay. DIA is basically flat, just kind of trading sideways, currently negative by about 0.2%. Looks like they actually did end the day positive yesterday as well. Barely. RSP also ended yesterday positive. They had a they had to climb back pretty good amount there. Um, nice flat open today. Traded lower. Nice little pop there. The second thirty minutes, and we are slightly negative. 005 percent. All right. So the RSP. I mean, look at that huge, crazy lower move yesterday we got on the RSP. That is nuts. Did we really move that low? One, six, eight. Now we'll say one, six, nine. Did we really move down to one, six, nine? Uh, yeah, yeah, we pretty much did. Okay. Man, that's a pretty crazy, crazy uh, looking wick there. Okay. Uh, I can tell you one thing. If we do want to roll them back over and trade and get below that crazy wick, uh, yeah, it'll it'll take out a lot of stop losses. Probably be moving lower at that point. DIA actually filled this gap. These wicks overlap all the way going all the way back to August 14th. So a little overlappage there, not much. IWM. Uh, bouncing, hitting those moving averages today, uh, the daily moving averages. It's kind of where it topped out today. Q's, yeah. So the thing you notice about, you know, the IWM, the DIA, and the RSP is all, every all three of these yesterday were trading lower yesterday morning compared to last week's low, and the Q's was not. And that was kind of one of the things that we talked about yesterday morning was Q's not breaking down. That's typically like, hey, you wanna you wanna kind of start piling into the queues then sure enough like they kind of just took off i know some semiconductor stocks did pretty well yesterday nvidia amd I'll take a look at some of that here in just a second spy did not quite break last week's lows uh it also had a pretty good rally there currently up 0.1 percent not really doing too much today um, as far as some of the stocks that crushed yesterday, NVIDIA had a hugely bullish day. They were up 8% AMD, which looks like NVIDIA also paid a dividend. 
uh, AMD up almost 5%. <laughs> so yeah, some of these were doing pretty well yesterday. VIX was uh, looking like it was basing on top of these moving averages. going to move higher, but obviously that huge intraday reversal yesterday. Uh, it has just continued to kind of slowly pull back down. It's not really dropping off uh, super aggressively, but I mean, it's under 20. Typically doesn't drop off super aggressively under 20. It just kind of steadily moves lower, pretty much. So not going to be surprised if we continue to move higher in the market. DXY having a hard time getting through this level here around 101.85 or so. 101.9. I mean, this could be one double top, and then we just move lower and just keep on rolling lower. So we'll find out here soon. Ooh, man, gold finally popped. Oh, man, look at that sucker. There it is. I mean, we were getting super tight up in here. Just tight every day. Just keep getting tighter and tighter. Um, looks, I mean, it looks pretty good. Finally popping out of that sucker. Let's see. How's the futures looking? Yeah, futures look pretty good. I would say as long as it holds this breakout by the end of the day, that would look really good. Um, SI, I'm going to see how silver's doing. So silver had a little bit more of an extended pullback over the past couple of months. All right. Uh, but it is seeing that bounce today. 10-year yields. Yields bouncing. Nice little doji action yesterday. Uh, bouncing a little bit today. I'm sure there was some volatility around the data we got this morning. Yeah, a little bit of volatility around some of that data we got this morning. Okay. 10-year yield still holding over the zero line, even though it did try to come back down yesterday on the 10 2 inversion. Uh, currently holding over that line. Um, and you know, one of the things that we were looking at yesterday, uh, when we went back and looked at, looked historically across uh, a lot of the different yield curves, we looked at a bunch of them historically is like really when they uninvert, it's not, uh, there's, there's, there was a few times where it just it moves very strongly uninverting and it didn't really waffle. It didn't really bounce around the zero line. There was a lot of times, though, it bounced around the zero line for a few weeks, you know, maybe even a, maybe even longer than a few weeks, and then it moved back, you know, um, above the zero line. So we looked at that on the, the you know, the 10 versus one year, the 30 compared to the two year, 30 compared to the five year. Um, 10 year compared to the six months. So we looked at a lot of different ones, but it wasn't too often. We just steamrolled across a lot of times we got back to the zero line, kind of waffled to here a little bit and then continued higher. So I wouldn't be surprised. We kind of waffled here for a bit. Anyways, moving on. HYG really built up some pressure up here. I mean, probably not a bad spot to say, Hey, you know, I wouldn't mind taking a shot because you probably have some kind of, uh, well, you got some kind of top in right there, but you got all these moving averages that are kind of coming up. So we might continue to see some pressure build, especially if it just kind of continues to go sideways a little bit. But if you start to do something like that, then that'd be a little bit different. I think for now, I think you'd probably want to be developing a position maybe here for the HYG as it continues to build pressure, but maybe have a stop loss back below these, this level makes a lot of sense to me. L Q D. It did get above that Friday high yesterday. It did not hold it and it's pulling back a little bit today. Um, it is negative. H Y G is a little bit positive. L Q D is a little bit negative. T L T is a little bit negative. Makes sense. As we're seeing some of those yields move a little bit positive. I'd be curious to see maybe if we pulled down again tomorrow, and throw a larger upper wick on the weekly. See if that happens. Be curious to see how we end tomorrow. Uh, as far as sector rotation for the day, communications is leading the day. So meta or alphabet. Energies outperforming. 
discretionaries, tech, materials also outperforming in line with the markets, industrials and materials. Underperformers is utilities, financials, and then lower end of the day is healthcare and real estate. Okay. As far as intraday price action, tech looking pretty good there. Energy looking pretty good. Communications and discretionaries. Underperformers is basically everything else. Staples, industrials, materials, utilities, financials, lower end is healthcare and real estate. Okay. And as far as yesterday's move off the low, let's see who's the big winner. I'm sure it is there the the tech, the big old tech guy. So tech led the rally yesterday. Makes sense. There's a lot of semiconductors are very bullish by the end of the day. Uh, discretionaries and communications also did pretty good through our current time period. Not by the end of the day, 